As China has grown stronger in the field of infrastructure construction, it has successfully built a high-speed railway network across the country. Data shows that the total length of China's high-speed railways has exceeded 48,000 kilometers. China accounts for 66% of the total mileage of high-speed rail in the world. No matter whether it is steep mountains or dense rivers and swamps, it seems that nothing can stop China from building high-speed railways. They have created a series of construction miracles, which are admired by many developed countries in the world. However, compared with the rapid expansion of China's high-speed rail network, Russia's high-speed rail project planning seems to have always been difficult to get off the ground, which has become a major challenge for Russia. As early as 2017, Russia was determined to build its first high-speed railway. According to the plan, Russia will invest up to 1.7 trillion rubles to build a high-speed railway connecting Moscow and St. Petersburg. Usually, countries that do not have the technology but want to build high-speed railways will consider inviting China or other countries to cooperate. Given the close relationship between China and Russia, Russia is likely to consider outsourcing part of this important project to Chinese companies. But unexpectedly, Russia refused to cooperate with China in building this high-speed railway. What happened behind this? If you like our video content, please click to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can receive all our latest video content. Now, let's get into today's topic. First, let's take a closer look at Russia's ambitious high-speed rail project. Imagine a 708-kilometer modern high-speed railway connecting Moscow and St. Petersburg. This is the grand blueprint planned by the Russian government. Not only is the high-speed rail an engineering marvel, it also promises to reduce the four-hour journey between the two cities to just two hours. This project did not happen overnight. As early as the early 21st century, Russia had included it in national planning. Although the initial construction plan was scheduled for 2017, the progress of the project has been continuously delayed due to various factors. It was not until 2019 and 2021 that the Russian government reproposed construction plans. However, technical challenges are always present, especially during the long and cold months of Russian winter, when temperatures often drop to dozens of degrees below zero, which poses a great challenge to the materials, equipment and even construction efficiency of high-speed rail construction. Moreover, whether trains can operate safely in such extremely low temperatures must also be considered during railway construction. It must be mentioned that Russia has vast land, but many areas are covered with permafrost all year round. To build hundreds of kilometers of railways under such conditions will require huge resources and funds. Incredibly, the estimated cost of this project is as high as 1.7 trillion rubles, equivalent to approximately $18 billion. The raising, allocation, and use of funds have become a major challenge for Russian railways. Despite all the difficulties faced, the Russian government has not given up and has been actively preparing the required resources and materials. However, for many Russians, the construction of this high-speed railway seems to be an impossible task. Its planned route has also been controversial and the project had to be temporarily shelved. What's even more unfavorable is that with the outbreak of the Russia-Ukraine conflict, this project is facing delays again. It was not until August 2023 that Russian President Putin finally issued an order, announcing that the time for project implementation had arrived, which meant that construction of this ambitious project was about to officially begin. Cooperation between Russia and China has been stable over the past few years, especially in the energy sector. Russia plans to build high-speed rail and has expressed its interest in cooperation with China many times. China's high-speed rail technology is world-renowned and in a leading position, while Russia's railway system seems a bit backward in comparison. The top speed of its commercial trains does not even exceed 200 km per hour. In contrast, in China, the operating speed of its high-speed trains can easily exceed 350 km per hour. 
This achievement is due to several breakthroughs in China's high-speed rail technology, including seamless rails, IGBT chip technology, special bearings for high-speed rail, advanced power supply systems, and unified high-speed rail network command system, etc. The leadership of these technologies not only makes Japan, which was once proud of the Japanese model high-speed rail technology, have to praise it, but compared with other countries, China's high-speed rail has a better cost-benefit ratio. Given the close cooperation between China and Russia, many expected this major high-speed rail project to eventually fall into Chinese hands. However, during the bidding process for the high-speed rail project last year, Chinese companies unexpectedly failed to win the bid. So, why did Russia not hand over this high-speed rail project to China in the end? In fact, the fundamental reason for Russia's decision not to cooperate with Chinese companies in building high-speed railways is Russia's deep concerns about over-reliance on foreign technology. Russia is worried that this dependence will allow its high-speed rail technology to fall into the hands of other countries. What is more serious is that it may lose its ability to develop independent research and development. Especially after the Russia-Ukraine conflict, Russia has become more aware that the lack of independence in its own technology will put it at an extremely disadvantageous position in future global competition and even conflicts. Although cooperating with China can save Russia a lot of resources and research and development time, after all, China has the technical and economic strength that Russia needs, but Russia ultimately decided to let its own companies undertake the high-speed rail project. For Russia, handing over high-speed rail projects to local companies will not only create many job opportunities and reduce unemployment, but also stimulate domestic consumption and inject new vitality into the economy. This strategic choice reflects Russia's determination to break through technological obstacles and reduce its dependence on foreign countries. According to the Russian satellite news agency, Russia is planning to build a high-speed rail train factory in Moscow with the goal of manufacturing and testing the first high-speed rail prototype in 2027. At the same time, Russian railway companies are also actively promoting the construction of this 708-kilometer high-speed rail line connecting Moscow and St. Petersburg, which is expected to be completed by 2030. Although Russia has chosen not to cooperate with Chinese companies, China still supports Russia in completing the high-speed rail project independently. If Russia encounters obstacles in the construction or research and development of high-speed rail, I believe China will provide support to the best of its ability and the friendly relations between the two sides will remain stable. What do you think about this?